just an activity. We should constantly update and enhance our immigration knowledge from various available sources, but again, it's just not available sources, it is relevant sources. And also, the immigration law firms. Conduct awareness programs for business on immigration updates and also the consequences of being non-compliant. Talk to them on the penalty. Talk to them about debarring, re-registration, uh, blacklisting of the company. Most of us face this challenge with business because they say, okay, what is big deal about uh, compliances? You talk about compliances, which for us results in losing a client. It is $1.2 million, blah, 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 all that. But if you talk about, uh, what do you say, uh, blacklisting of a company, I'm sure any delivery person gets an alert and says, okay, now let me know what exactly you mean. What am I supposed to do? Then making use of the technology tools that have updated immigration processes and policies and they need to be aligned with the law and helpful to the organization as well. And I think ILSOOM is doing a great job in doing this contribution towards the tool and technologies and they are in line with the compliances. And reinvent the internal procedures to suit the immigration laws, the business requirement and it should be in online with the immigration compliance. Just don't keep following the old traditional checklist the old processes. If you feel something is not right, you just walk up and say, okay, I feel this is not fine because I'm sure we, throughout the years of experience that we have, we will know that. Two cases you do. By the time you finish the third case, I'm sure we know what the process is. Now, immigration service within the organization versus business. The main challenge is business. Business is always in a dilemma between a stiff market competition and immigration compliance. They caught up with both of these guys. This is the, this in turn transfers the pressure back to the immigration team. Here is where the immigration has to play a vital role. We should not be you know, taking up the pressure and saying, okay, fine, let me just do as what the business says. We have to support the business and help them in honoring to the client's commitment. Best example we can quote here is travel on a business visa. People travel on a business visa but actually they go and work. At the port of entry, they just start asking them questions. You are on a business visa, just the first two questions he answers fine. And the third question, yes, they say yes, I'm going for work. I have even come across some cases where the guys have come back and told the way the immigration port of entry guys asked me, I didn't know what to do. By chance, I just, I was so worked up, I was so tense that I had to go back and say yes, I'm working but it is only for a short period. And then again, we blame the port of entry. The meeting up with the client's commitment is a challenge again because due to the tightening of immigration laws to suit the respected uh, economic conditions, business is finding it extremely challenging in honoring to the commitment that they have set up with the clients and also to abide by the compliance. And I think we have to help the business to be compliant. We have to explain them the pros and cons. Not only that, immigration team should be involved at the time of an RFP. What is an RFP? A proposal stage. Even before they could come to a work permit stage, they set up expectations with the client. They say, okay, fine, they have stiff competitors across them. So they say, best first question they ask, okay, when can you get the person on board? So what do the salespeople do? If you don't educate them, if you don't tell them about the timelines, they say, okay, fine, I have XYZ companies with me and I need to get this business. It's an excellent business. I do not want to lose it. So what do we do? Okay, fine. I would get the person on board on one week. Is it ever possible in history you get a person on in one week without having a petition? It's not possible. So I think we have to set a right expectation to the client. Then finally it is the associate. And I think all of us know how difficult it is to adhere to the compliances with the associate. Because at the end of it, he's the guy who's going to go on board. But poor responses, ignoring immigration guidelines provided to them, and again it leads to non-compliances. Like what? There is again the delay in filing the SSL. We cannot track an I-94 because basically they do not even go and give that entry notification saying, okay, my I-94 is going to expire in this particular period. And this leads to extension of I-94s. And worst scenario is extending a business visa. They forget even to cancel their calls in case of uh, UK. They forget to uh, notify uh, cancellation of e in the port. So 
educating the employee to ensure the authenticity of documentation of information submitted to them is very, very important. Tell them the implications that failing to give the accurate documentation again leads to blacklisting of the company, debarring entry of the associate to the other country for his future travel. I recollect an instance, uh, this is I think some three years back, um, they had around some 20 to 25 folks traveling, uh, uh, traveling to Maryland again. And this lady was sitting, she had two checklists, one is for uh, basically on the marital status, one married, married, and the other one uh, not married. So she was just looking at the checklist, and then uh, this guy came and uh, she said, okay, she was marking the checklist, and she said, okay, where is your marriage certificate? And then he says, okay, I'll get it tomorrow. But uh, tomorrow, it came, it came only after a week, and then he submitted. At that point of time, she was a little bit uh, ch uh, chill and relaxed, and she said, uh, we're not married, and from, why are you giving your uh, marriage certificate? And he says, no ma'am, you just asked me last week, so I managed to get this marriage certificate. <laughs> education that we give it to these guys and that is the kind of uh, compliance that they can understand. Because for an IT guy, he's really not bothered what is compliance, all he knows a visa needs to be stamped and then he needs to travel. One of the top guys came and said, why are you asking me for my passport? Do you know what you're asking? I'll give you a photocopy of it, just get it stamped. So these are the kind of uh, people we have in the system where, and you can't go back to them and say, look, you're supposed to do this. Because it's none of his business to understand immigration. Because in most of the places, they are just treated as a visa section and not even as an immigration person. So I think together we have to stand and say, yes, we have to be together and tell what an immigration is and what a compliance is. Just before I would uh, close this, I just want to say this. Adhering to immigration compliance are not stop signals. They are guidelines. Thank you. Passport validity, yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Take it that they forget. I hope they don't forget to take the passport. <laughs> a large amount of the subject area that I also get to go through. Um, I'm pleased to see that we're exactly on the same line. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all,